Everyone has a dream job. For the last four years of my life, my dream has been to be a CGI artist for a real movie. Well, for the last three years, my favorite YouTuber has been a filmmaker named Danny Gewurz. And for the last two years of his life, he's been creating a movie. Then one day, he posted that he needed a VFX artist. This is the story of having my dream job as a CGI artist in 19, working with my favorite YouTuber, working the hardest I have in my entire life, and how this experience would forever change my state of mind. Hey Danny, so my name is Charlie. I'm a VFX artist and a filmmaker from Portland. So this is the video I sent Danny after I saw they needed a VFX artist. He had posted that he needed birds. So I made some CG birds to show him what I could do. These birds are completely CGI, meaning anything about them can be changed. Their speed, their direction, their density, everything. I really hope that I have the opportunity to work with you on this film. I was going to journal, but I decided I'd rather record my voice so I could remember how excited I felt right now. I just had a call with Danny Gewurz. <laughs> like, THE fucking Danny Gewurz. I'm having the first feeling I've had in years where I feel like everything's going to be alright. Where I feel like things are actually gonna work out. I realized that like I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing right now. Like, I'm not at the point I want to be, but I'm on the path I want to be. And that's the same thing. That, like, literally is the same thing. <sighs> it's such a relief that I get to, like, buy pizza now and, like, eat it and enjoy it and not feel like I'm wasting money. And I get to just, like, spend tonight, like, recording YouTube videos or, like, planning the VFX shots I'm going to do for Danny and not feel like I'm like not doing enough. And I feel like I finally have the capacity and space to just focus on learning, which is all I wanna do. I feel like I can give myself the room to do that. Mm, maybe there's something in that. So right after Danny hired me as the only VFX artist for his movie, I flew back to America for Christmas and began day one of Operation Danny. there. Okay, none of that b-roll has actually happened yet. What I have not mentioned is what Danny is hiring me to do. My job is insane. If I can pull this off, it will be a miracle. Danny needs three things. One, a baby bird. I have this shot of grass. He needs a baby bird in that grass. I need a sculpt texture, simulate, rig, animate, and composite an entirely CG baby bird from scratch. If I work in this every single day, it will still take over a month. Two, I have this shot of a lake. He needs a flock of geese on that water. I need a sculpt, texture, rig, animate, and composite a whole flock of geese from scratch. Three, now for the goddamn Pierre de Resistance. I have this 30 second shot of a character running into a lake. The camera is shaky, there's water everywhere, the environment is 100% out of focus, either super dark or super bright, and in all of this, Danny needs a flock of geese to get scared off the water, fly behind the guy, and then off into the sunset. I need to sculpt, texture, rig, and animate an entirely new flock of geese, then track them into this scene which I don't think is possible, rotoscope them behind the guy, and then comp them into the scene. To do this, I need to learn a software I've never touched called Nuke, which costs $12,000 a year just to own. This isn't work. For the next two months, I'm on an absolute grind of learning. If I can pull this off, it will be an absolute miracle, but I will learn more from this project than in the last four years of learning CG on my own.
This is actually working. Look at this. I made this shit in like a morning. That looks like a bird head. <laughs> this might actually work. Oh my god. <laughs> What's fascinating to me is that when people create things on their own online, they're like gods. They know what they're doing, you know, they don't mess up. For me, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I'm learning this stuff from scratch on my own. You know, for sculpting, I've never done that before in my life. Look at what day one looked like. Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> it's so sick now to see this stuff actually working out. Like, as of today, look at this. That's a bird. That's a literal baby bird. I spent five days now trying and failing to add hair, but honestly, I don't even really care. Like, eventually, I'll figure it out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, what's up, Danny? How stressed were you during all this? There were ups and downs. There were days where I was like, um, I was like, oh, I can't wait to meet with Danny. And then days where I'm like, shit, I'm just never gonna meet with him. Uh, I know more about birds than anyone should. If I ever have a bird project in the future, I'm gonna be like, thank God, thank God. Yeah, man, it's gonna be sweet. I can't wait. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right, see you later. See you later. All that time creating Maverick taught me so much about Blender. This screen recording is 30 minutes long. In just 30 minutes, I turned a cube into a goose. For reference, Maverick took two weeks to make. I've been playing the long game. The more I learn, the easier this becomes. Even if I waste time spending literally all day learning and writing Sirianni notes, it means that I can save time later on. I'm finally going to work on the one part of this project that I've really been worried about, which is the goose animation. Um, I don't know, animating like wings for a flying bird, uh, especially not a small one, like a, a big one that has to have momentum and stuff is really difficult for me. Uh, and it's very hard rigging something like this with the feathers and you know, the goosenecky thing and all of that. So that's going to be tonight's goal, is to be able to animate the goose. Um, we'll see. This wing animation was hell. I could not figure out how to make these wings flap realistically. But over a week of trying, and like everything else, eventually I was able to figure it out. Alright, it, um... It's like day 45 now. I've learned so much, it's unexplainable. I feel like a god in Blender. Um, but at the same time, the crux of this whole project for me is Nuke. I need to become really good at an industry level software used in literally every single major film there is. Nuke is hard. It's so far outside of any software I'm comfortable with. If I can pull this part off, then I will have learned a brand new, super complicated VFX software in less than a month. I only have a few weeks before I need to have this entire project completely finished and it's going to shit. I was right, this scene 
cannot be tracked. You know, in an ideal world, I track a ton of points throughout this whole shot. The computer solves how the camera moves in 3D space. I send that camera over to Blender in 3D, render out the geese, put it back into Nuke in 2D, and comp it all in. But surprise, surprise, these blurry, dark green, grainy smudges cannot be tracked for 30 plus seconds. All right, it's the next day and nothing has changed at all. Um, the whole shot is unusable. It doesn't matter how amazing the geese models are or how good the, you know, the animation is, if they just bounce all over the screen, it's still gonna look like that weird bird movie from the 2000s. I only have one option now and I am terrified of it. If I manually adjust the position of the geese for all 700 frames, then I can save this shot. This would be the most tedious thing I could ever imagine doing. I'm not just like manually helping the track out, I'm literally adjusting the position of the whole flock of geese 700 frames in a row. So for 10 hours, I sat in a coffee shop and later a library, manually tracking the flock of geese into the scene. My hand was shaking by like hour six. I can't believe this is how I spent an entire day. I spent the next week adding shadow catchers, water reflections, and a ton of other stuff over the lake scenes, rotoscoping the flying scene, and grading and compositing everything together. I feel like a VFX veteran. I look back two months ago and I didn't know how to do even a single thing that now I don't even really think twice about. I've learned and you know grown so much as an artist over these last few months and it really is all thanks to Danny for taking a chance on this overconfident kid from Portland. Enjoy the birds. I can't believe that I was able to do any of this. Play Maverick again. Look at him. Look at him. Go subscribe to Danny Gewurz. I could not imagine working with a better person. Sincerely, I will always be so thankful for this opportunity, Danny. And I can't wait to see you in Portland for the premiere of your film. I'll see you all in the next episode.